Where do you want me to start? Well, let's go. Let's start with what's going on right now. Um, right now, we're actually staying in my dad's old trailer. Uh, we're allowed to stay there, but we can only have like a minimum of stuff. Technically, my dad kind of wants us out as soon as possible. That way, it can get rented out. Okay. Why are you not living? with your parents? Because my dad decided to move into his girlfriend's house, which is a two bedroom, and she has a 10 year old autistic son. So your dad told you there's not room for you in the house? Yeah. Okay. And where's your, where's your mom at? Uh, my mom is in rehab for meth. Okay, where's that at? Uh, last I knew, that's if she's still in it, it's in Norfolk. When was the last time you had contact with your mom? Last time I had contact with her was in June. She straight out told me she didn't care what happened to me anymore and that she was playing the system, so. Okay. I have no contact with her no more okay. after that. Okay. How's your education going? I'm thinking uh, pretty good. I'm on schedule. I'm actually probably gonna finish my class, my one class tomorrow, and then I got another five and another 2.5 credit class left, and that's it. Okay. Oh, so, you're close then, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's Good awesome. for you. So we don't need to do anything with education. Leave it the way it is. Okay. Um, maybe funding for college, which I'm supposed to start in January. Okay. okay. But okay. I'm not worried we can about that yet. Cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Um, physical health. If you aren't with dad, how are you going to go to the doctor? What if he gets sick? Good yep. question. Yeah. So let's mark that one. Okay. How about mental health? Do you, it's kind of like physical health. If you don't have an insurance card and you need to go see somebody, right? Yeah, I really won't go to counseling after what my stepmom did to me, so. What's that? She used counseling as a um, punishment nonstop. And when I would come home from counseling, things would just get worse, okay. so. But you talked to Stephanie, right? Have you talked to Stephanie? Yes, I have talked to Stephanie. You know, she's a counselor. I know. And she's really nice. I, I would challenge you to change your mindset with that because obviously your mom's not involved with you no more, but uh, that's for you. And I do feel like if you find the right counselor, it makes a world of a difference. And but don't do it for anybody else but yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll work on it. Is there anything else you need, like, right now? We have a food pantry at the high school. Then probably food because I have yeah. like forty dollars and that's all I have left and okay. that's to go get food for now. She she needs some food or whatever whatever she needs. I know you'll help her out. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, bye. Take whatever you need. There's toiletry items. There's clothing. There's coats. There's hats. There's gloves. So whatever you need, you just. Take whatever you need. We'll get you, you can get a bag and just fill it with food. So if you want to know what it's like with your mom being a drug addict, say that she doesn't love you, doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. And then your dad saying, I got a new girlfriend and we don't have room for you. And we expect these kids to be in school every day. Brandy Busher and Officer Jeremiah Johnson provide the first line of support for all students and families within the North Platte Public School District. I just need to make sure that the place is safe for your son, so. That's fine, yeah, I'm just cleaning things out. Okay. We were invited to follow them for nearly 20 days over the course of a year. Most days, Brandy and Officer Johnson would ping pong between situations with students, their families, administrators, teachers, child welfare, the courts, and mental health providers. Together, they're dedicated to removing the barriers that keep students from being engaged in school and hopeful about the future. How many students are in your district? 4,000 students. And how many people do your job? One, plus Officer Johnson. 
think Officer Johnson goes beyond the realms of a police officer, so I'm grateful. It's been a blessing to have someone that's more than willing to jump into a situation knowing he can't write a citation or there's not a crime or he, he could easily say, this isn't my job. You know, he could do that a lot, but he doesn't. He jumps in. You just need to focus more on your priorities? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything if I I'm help? overwhelmed with something, you know, he'll pick up the slack and then vice versa. And that's been, that's been nice because I don't know that I could have continued without having that support. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. It was like scary. <laughs> I was sweating. How are you? Yeah. All right, it's time to get up. What do you want me to make you this morning? Um, can I have um, toast with um, cheese on it? Please? Toast with cheese? Okay. When I applied to be the school resource officer, I don't think I truly understood, um, one, the importance of this position within a school, and two, um, how many lives I actually can touch or how many students I can actually help. Bye, guys. I love you. Bye, Mama. Love you, sweetie. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> What's up, bud? <laughs> Have a good one, buddy. I feel like North Platte has it's it's had its cycles, you know, and we've seen we've seen some uptick where we get new business and, and everyone's excited, but within the last five years, it, it feels like just a progressive decline. Um, a lot of that um, was railroad layoffs. Our Shopco closed, our JC Penney's closed, our Alco has closed, several restaurants have closed, our mall is three-fourths empty. So we've lost those jobs, you know, which again, a lot of those people have struggled to recover. They're not finding the jobs that they used to have or the opportunities. So it's, it's hit our community really hard in, um, as far as poverty goes. Over half of our families live below or at the poverty line which for a community our size is, is pretty, it's a big deal for our, our schools and for our students. And slowly with the loss of jobs and loss of income, we've seen methamphetamine and drug use. But if I were to go back 13, 14 years, methamphetamine was not a word that schools used or even something I really thought much about. And now it, it, it comes up all the time. We are seeing a ton of drug problems. I would say at least 80% of our cases have a drug component to them. What we're filing on are children who have been exposed to methamphetamine, uh, children who are not being fed, clothed, cared for because of methamphetamine use, um, are being put in terrible danger because not only do mom and dad use methamphetamine, but mom and dad's friends who come and go at all hours of the day and night are also using methamphetamine. The impact for a child is, it's, devastating. They, they don't learn. You know, our kids, we've, we've had cases over the years of small children that have tested positive, which means their exposure was so great that they were physically um, impacted by methamphetamine use by a parent. So those are the kids who are kind of in sensory overload all day. Um, lights are really bright. Sounds are really loud. Um, they might you know, run around screaming and then fall on the ground and take a nap for two hours. That you would just love for everybody. I do think that um, issues in the home translate to issues in the school. 
So if uh, they're up late at night playing video games all night, if mom and dad are partying all night, whatever it is, that affects them at school. A couple months ago, we had a parent um, admit to using meth in one of our school meetings, and everybody was kind of caught off guard, not sure how to respond. Um, and it took probably three months before anything really ever happened with that student. And um, What does that mean? You said it, it took three months for something to even happen, and then call, call who to do what? Uh, so call it into the child abuse hotline, um, because the, you know, you have a parent in a school meeting admitting to abusing drugs and admitting to not being able to care for their child, essentially. So we call those reports in to the child abuse hotline. And sometimes we get a response and sometimes we don't. And sometimes um, the response we get is, uh, you know, we met with the parents and everything seems fine. And um, basically we're just going to move on. That or they got too much on their plate and they just... It's not a top priority for them. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're um, under-resourced too? Maybe. Where would this child go? I mean, lots of times they'll go with a family member, a grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle. They always, you know, try that first. Yeah. But then there are times kids go into foster care. Um, but again, that's not... When we make a call, it's not so much for that. It, that's yeah. the extreme. That's, you know, 10 steps down the road. Right. But for a lot of us, it's just, can someone please go in and, and make sure this mom's okay and make sure that, you right. know, there's some assistance offered to her and some resources um, because it's now impacting this child's education, which is kind of a big deal. Can you guys tell me what happened when you first came in this morning? As soon as I came in my office, there's three girls here. Um, one girl's in a crisis. So, you know, she came to school today and she's not, obviously not prepared to learn. Um, she has so many other things going on in her life. She can't focus in a setting like this right now. To be honest, and you can contest this, this has been a concern of ours ever since you've gotten here, is just getting you this set up so that you don't have to worry about this stuff. And I don't know if I can handle it anymore because she keeps telling me that that whole rape situation. Mm -hmm. She's telling me that it, I'm sure it happened, but she's saying that I couldn't help myself and I always, I wanted that. Okay. So it makes me depressed and I've been cutting about it because I keep getting flashbacks and I need I help her. for it. Bridge of Hope is a child advocacy center, so we're one of seven in Nebraska. A child advocacy center is just a place where all the different disciplines come together for a child abuse investigation. The school is considered part of our multidisciplinary team, meaning law enforcement, um, HHS, the Department of Health and Human Services, medical team, whoever is required to help investigate their case that way. Statistically, we know that it's somewhere between one in three and one in four girls will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday, and one in nine boys, although boys are significantly underreported. So we know for sure that within that class, there should be um, some children that are unfortunately being sexually abused. And on top of that, we're dealing with physical abuse, drug use in this community, and neglect, and witness to domestic violence, other things that could be traumatizing a child, all sometimes co-occurring within a household and definitely occurring with multiple children in a classroom, I would assume. So this is Brandy Busher. She's the student services coordinator just for the school. So she provides, and some of the stuff that you had brought up is like food and stuff like that. She, that's a lot what she deals with. And then when we talk about behavior health too, when you're talking about your, some of your mental stuff, um, she also assists with that type of stuff. So, so. be on medication because I have PTSD, I have depression, I have bipolar, I have all that. Um, and things that Sisters is not going good right now. Um, she showed me pictures of drug and drug paraphernalia that's in the house. Her little niece has been removed from the house before for drugs. They just recently got her back. I believe so. Maybe two or three months. Okay. 
No, and no one still has not got her her insulin. Um, yeah, that's how she told me that, and I was like, uh. We need Dennis to get here. Yes. 91. Hey. Hi. Hi. So, um, we're up here at the high school. I don't, that's going to be up with HHS, but we, we're going to see what we can get resolved today. Well, no, well, another concern too is she's been cutting. She has a lot of cuts on her right forearm. And she's reporting drug use in the home. She's reporting no food. She, she needs help. She needs some long-term help. Yeah. Oh, and Dennis is beeping in right now, so. She is um, at the North Platte High School. He's on his way. She came in here. She's not looking too good. She's pretty upset. Okay. Um, she has cuts on her arms. Um, she said she's been recently just cutting herself because she doesn't feel like she feels like her world's, world's collapsing and nobody's doing anything for her. And now she's saying too, she did show me pictures of drugs and drug paraphernalia laying around the house. Like what? Uh, THC wax, marijuana grinder. She says they use that butane torch, but she doesn't know for what. And there's only a couple drugs I know of where they use butane torches. Yeah. Oh well. We'll deal with it. You know Dennis, yeah. right? How's he doing? So is your mom, I thought your mom went back to Florida. Is she here still? I haven't been to contact her. So you don't know where your mom is? Okay. And um, I have Instagram too. And okay. um, she sent a whole bunch of pictures off of my Instagram to my sister saying that she's going to get me in trouble for the stuff that's on my Instagram when there's nothing. Like, what, what are they talking She's about? She's saying that, because I have a girlfriend, okay, and just me and her, mm -hmm. just always hugging and taking pictures like that, like, that's normal. Mm -hmm. She said we can, I can get in trouble for that, when I don't see how, why. No, you can't get in trouble for I that. I didn't think so. Okay. And so she was making that a big deal, and she said that she wants to press charges and everything like that. I don't know why. Your mom? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's kind of I, I didn't think so. It's I not legal to be gay. Yeah. No, you can't get in trouble for that. I didn't think so. And you shouldn't be ashamed by it either. Do you know what you're going to do, Mr. Brian? Just kind of let her know just so she. Again, with running her through the emergency room, having her assessed. Do you have thoughts of harming yourself, or sometimes if you have thoughts, be honest with them. I do have thoughts sometimes. Okay. It's just when I'm at my sister's. Okay. I do that. And be honest with them because they can help you. And there's nothing to be ashamed of or like that. Those are normal feelings, and sometimes we just need help dealing with those. If we don't hear from you, we can't help you, right? So I know it takes a lot of courage, but you know that my office door is always open for any of you guys, okay? For a girl that's scared and stuff like that, for her to even come into my office. Yeah. She's been hanging around school after school and just standing there, and she's kind of followed me a little bit. And I think she just, she wanted to talk and she just didn't know how to do it. So I think we as a school sometimes feel like we're the voice that no one listens to. You know, we have the kids for seven hours a day, all day, but yet sometimes when we call, we get, you know, oh, those teachers are just softies or they're overreacting or uh, we get told a lot we're imposing our own values on other parents um, and these, these types of things are said. And I think for for us, it's it's like, no, we're seeing a kid who's who's not having basic needs met and we can't teach them. So we need help. Like we need... HHS and these agencies to help us get to a place where, where we can. Um, and that seems to be a constant, constant battle. How'd that go? We removed all their kids, well, the little girl too. Oh. And they just got her back. Yeah, I know. So it was emotional. It wasn't bad, but it was, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. As you would imagine, if you were to lose your children. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, man. Okay. I'll be there about five minutes. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay, all right, we'll talk later. Okay, all right, we'll talk. Hi, 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 Rudy. What's up? Do the boys want french fries instead of... I want french fries, Mom. It's so hard to, you know, watch kids fall through the cracks and watch kids that don't make it. I just want a kid to come to school and learn, and I want him to graduate. I wouldn't be working in the school system if I thought there was a different avenue um, to help kids. New Jersey? Okay. Correct. All right, what about that one? Arkansas? What's four, four plus, plus one? one Don't write that answer yet. What's four plus one? Mexico? Okay. This, this is how so. we work. Uh, and this is what's hard, and I will tell you this is the hard part, is just all these phone calls, and then when we're trying to concentrate on one case, yeah. and then well, cause you this need to happens. Check your email. Do I? Yeah, it's bad. Um, so it's hard to concentrate on one thing. Well, and then how do you prioritize? You know, because we're trying to deal with this girl who's in crisis mode, but now we have a couple others, one school that's in crisis, and then, you know, with the head start, another, it's not even a student of ours. Um, Hi, Tamron. So, it's Brandy I mean, it's just, Fisher. How are you? Phew, phew. Officer Johnson. We have a kid who truly has alcoholism and, and comes to school intoxicated. And dad's been taking away the alcohol and no alcohol in the house or something like that. And the kid got into some prescription drugs this morning. And my standpoint with this is not a, a punitive action. It's more of, again, services it's and resources. Yeah. Um, you know, I can cite the kid for being under, under the influence. I can send him to court. But what is that going to help the problem? Right. And I, I, I say no. You know, but right now, Dad is taken to the emergency room just to make sure he's safe. Yeah. He's not. Is he's hard to keep alert. But um, he won't. He can't stand or sit on his own. He, he's just extremely high. So Dad's going to take him up to the hospital now, um, just for the safety precautions of that. And the hospital will give Dad resources. Um, they won't just admit him for the site. Yeah, they won't admit him for the site because it's not a a mental health issue with the alcoholism, with young. that portion of it, yeah. Well, it's too young. This is one kid with a really serious issue. Mm -hmm. And we don't, there's not a solution. There, there is no Right? Like, we do not have a psychiatrist in this town that will see anybody under 15. So you either have to go to Scott's Bluff or Kearney sometimes. They're sometimes full. The next closest place, Lincoln. You're a psychiatrist. You're trying to work a program with a family. Hey, I'm going to put your child back in your home. Here are the safety measures. Um, why don't you come so we can talk about it three hours away? We're lucky as all get out compared to Mullen or Thedford or Hyannis or any of the uh, Sandhills communities, right. they're driving just for a weekly therapy session, three hours round trip, just to go to a therapist once a week. My daughter was in uh, ICU a year ago. Um, she tried to take her life. And um, when I found her, she was pretty much dead. Well, we have kids at my school that you could wear a different shirt that no one likes or like a different brand and everyone just sees it and like, just, like stares at you and points fingers at you. Or 
you're too fat, you're too skinny, and they'll point at you and stare at you, and they just make fun of you because of your size. Did that happen to you? Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Last year, I was, like, really skinny, and everyone noticed, and they just... I, was, I just went to school, and everyone, like, eventually started rumors and saying that I was actually anorexic, and that I was, like, in the hospital, but I was still at school, and I was, like... I don't know why people believed it, but they just wanted to start drama. And how did you, how did you react when you heard these things? I don't, I didn't really cry over it until everyone was asleep. But now I just like be in my room crying by myself. And I, I just decided to like, get a lot of pills and stuff and try to kill myself. And then it didn't work, and then I got back to school. I went to this one place, Richard Young, and that helped me a lot, and I was happy and stuff. And I come back to school, and everyone was spitting rumors and telling me, telling me that people were saying I wanted attention and stuff, but I didn't really want attention. I had anxiety issues, and I didn't want anyone paying attention to me because I was always standing out and getting bullied. I didn't want attention. So now that you've come back to school, it's just like it was before? I have better friends now, and... I live in a better environment, and I've like gained weight, and I've met new people. But I th still think people think I want attention, even though I didn't. Yeah, I don't think people will believe me, so I just, I just don't talk about it. And if people start talking about it, I shut down, and I don't want to talk about it because no one understands. I'm sorry. Can you tell me a little bit about um, some of the struggles that you're that you and your family have had Well, I would have to tell you like a little bit about my family history in order for you to fully understand it um, I got married when I was really really young and I was within a really a really abusive man and He was abusive to me and my and my kids as well and so um, when like I finally left he committed suicide in the home with the kids. My kids have been in counseling ever since. Um, I've ch I'm trying to do everything that I can to help my kids. Could you tell me a little bit more about your daughter and her um, attempted suicide? Yes, um, so that morning um, we had actually accidentally overslept. And so I went into her room and she was laid out on the bed and I, I didn't realize, you know, at that point what she had done. And I was trying to wake her up and I couldn't get her to wake up. And at that point I, was, I slapped her across her face, you know, and then I see pills next to the bed, you know, like four bottles of pills. And uh, I, it was hysterical at that point and um, called. Um, actually, my daughter had hid the house phone as well so that when, um, when I went to go call 911, I couldn't call 911. So I had to run to my neighbor to get the phone and to call. And so that, the ambulance came. When all this happened, um, Officer Johnson was at the hospital um, with Amy, and he called me and asked me to go to Adams Middle School and get um, all the administration in one room and have a meeting. Um, so I knew something really bad had happened. Um, we didn't know what or who. So uh, when Officer Johnson got there and he told us what happened, um, he told us it was pretty grim. And um, pretty much the whole room broke down. Um, you know, I think we felt like we missed something. That was, that was hard. Um, the counselors cried, um, the admin cried. I mean, it was tough. We felt like we, we missed something really big. What about the girl that has a 10-day suspension? Yeah, I'm going to call. That's who I was going to call next. How old is she? Mm -hmm. 16. 
She's been suspended. Holy cow. One, two, three. She's been suspended four times and she only started it in January. She lives with her grandma. She's been in and out of our district for since she's been in kindergarten. She floats back to Omaha. I'm gonna guess that maybe she has a parent in Omaha. Let's see. Hello? Hi, is this Armida? Yes. Hi, Armida, this is Brandy Busher. Uh, is returning your call. Yeah, I would just check in because I know she's gonna go back to school and turn around and get kicked out again. Okay. She does not want to be in the school. Okay. She is having problems with teachers. Okay. And they don't let you quit at 16 no more. Yeah. And they said that she would keep hacking away on it. She could graduate like December with D's. Okay. So, um, yeah, why don't you guys plan on coming tomorrow at 9? Okay, I will call her and let her know. So she is here after work. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll talk to you then. All right. Okay, uh-huh, bye. Okay, let's talk about, you mentioned online mm -hmm. schooling. Yeah. So where are you at um, credit-wise for graduation? Do you know? Mm, because as long as I pass all my classes this semester, I should be able to graduate by December. I pulled it up uh, this morning. It, it showed you had like 157 credits. So a little better. So you'd need about 90 around there to graduate. Have, has anyone talked to you about TLC? Well, yeah. I asked him about that up at the school. That's where your mom went. She finished while she was having you. So you would go to school, um, I think it's from 8.30 to about noon, um, and you'd work online. So since you guys don't have a computer at home, mm -hmm. um, you know, they have computers there, and then they have staff there that'll help you. And then when you go to work and you, you save your paycheck stubs, then we can use those paycheck stubs and count those towards elective credits. Do you want to go out there? Is that something you think you... Because I don't want to put a kid out there who doesn't want to be out there or have that. I don't want to do anything, but I have to graduate, so... Yeah, yeah they don't let you walk at 16 no more, so... No. And you... you gotta I bet you want... Don't you want your... Not really. Diploma? No? You gotta complete it one way or the other, though, yeah. according to the laws anymore. Why don't you... Why... Why would you not want your diploma? Just, I don't really want to work for it. I just... I don't really want to deal with school anymore. I want to just work. That's but, you know, a lot of jobs require that diploma to make big bucks, you know, more money. If you wanted to go you work over at the... You don't need a lot of money, though. You just need to be able to survive. Like, That's... even if you went over to the hospital right now. I grew up in a railroad family. My dad was a railroader. My uncles were railroaders. My two big brothers are both railroaders, so... Um, and, and none of them went to college, and they didn't have to go to college. And, and my dad took great care of us, you know, and his job through the railroad took great care of our family. So traditionally, um, the emphasis on college hasn't always been there in this community um, because you didn't have to have that in order to go have a nice life and make a nice life for your family. And, and now that's gone. Slowly, um, not only are the jobs disappearing, but the ones they have are requiring a degree. People are going to have to change their mindsets. They're going to have to adapt and figure out what they're going to do because there's no more graduating from high school and walking into a job where you're making, you know, $80,000. That's not happening anymore. And how you feel right now, you might not feel in 10 years. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand right now you feel like you don't want to deal with school. But in 10 years, what if you decide you want to do something else mm -hmm. and you don't have that? And if, from what I can see, you're a really smart girl. I have you that you are a high ability mm -hmm. learner. 
Yep. That was a long time ago, though. Lots There's happened a lot, since then. Okay. A lot happened okay. in her life since then, yeah. She needs... So what's, what's she happened needs since to put then? put back up there. A lot. It's not good things. Basically, one parent then one her, sent her off to the other one, and, and she got shipped to one of the parents' grandparents, her mother, and she was a lot older and couldn't take care of her, so ended up with me. There, There's a lot going on, so a lot we ain't even gonna discuss yet. Absolutely, and you don't hmm. have to discuss it. But I wanna make sure that you have everything you need to be able to to be able to do this. We have a therapist that goes out to TLC um, about two hours a week, um, and you can schedule time with them. And that's up to you, it's free, we don't, you know, there'd be no cost, it's just someone out there to talk to. So when you get out there, if you feel like you wanna talk to her, um, she doesn't share anything with the school, we just contract with her to be out there for the kids. Use you wanting to just be done with school as motivation to work hard. Okay. Okay. And hopefully we can we can do TLC. Good. Sound like a plan? Yeah, mm -hmm. because she gets back over there, she's just going to end up kicked out again. Mm -hmm. So, and they said next time it's her fourth one, so okay. she will be out the remaining of the year here. Is this a student issue or a teacher issue or what's um, what's going on? Kind of like a my issue. Okay. I have a problem with authority and I just get really cocky. Okay. She's trying to grow up before she's ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There's not only people telling me what to she's do. She's been left in charge a lot. She's got each parent has oh a, a son about the same age. <laughs> She's always been left taking care of kids and being the boss when everybody's working and doing everything else. And she's had a lot, so that's why I let her get away with some, but I've been letting her have a little free time. Is it just you with Grandma right now? Um, no, my friend from Omaha moved in with us. I collected another 18-year-old the other day. And he has till May to finish, too. He hasn't gotten rolled yet. Do you have anything you need from me right now? No. No? Okay. Well, if you guys don't have anything else for me, then I'll talk with admin and give you All guys right. a call. Sounds okay. Good. Okay, thank you, guys. Yep, thank you. I think inherited trauma has a lot to do with what we see. Um, from an advocacy perspective, when I talk to parents, we will ask questions like, does your family have a history of sexual abuse? Does your family have a history of domestic violence or substance abuse? And more often than not, we're hearing yes. Um, and a lot of times with sexual abuse, we'll be talking to a, a mom or a parent and she'll say something along the lines of, I can't believe this is happening to my daughter. It happened to me at this exact same age. And so I think a lot of those issues are not being dealt with, and then history is repeating itself um, because the underlying issues haven't been dealt with. And I don't know how many generations back those go, but um, it tends to repeat itself, or that's what we see. But what do you do next? Um, I'll go meet with our admin um, and just push really hard for her to get into our TLC program. I just, you know, all we can do is try to do a different setting in a different way, a different style of educating and right. hope that that um, is what she needs. Did you hear her grandma say that her mom was in that program when she, when she was pregnant, pregnant with her? This is the generational trauma that you were talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think with this situation though, we have probably some pretty serious trauma and um, serious uh, depression and um, I don't know that grandma has the resources to to deal with that and I, I don't know if you guys picked up but she grandma said that's why I let her get away with some things um, grandma's being grandma and um, she also needs a parent who tells her no you're not staying out till 1 30 in the morning and 
Um, you know, your boyfriend's not moving in here and all these things. Um, and so that's, that's probably one of the biggest issues we see with grandparents raising kids, um, grandkids, is that um, they see them as grandkids and it's a whole different light and it's a whole different um, perspective for them. So it's hard for them to sometimes hold them accountable. It made me sad that she said she doesn't even want her diploma, um, and she's very happy just working where she's working. And, and isn't it enough just to survive? Isn't it enough just to survive? Yeah. I don't hear that very often. Um, most kids, even, even kids in rough situations, have hope and aspirations for their life. You know, um, when you ask them what they want to do, they, they have a vision. Right. Um, so that was, that kind of spoke to where she's at though, because she's, she's shut down. Kim, talk to you about school. I know, my grandma called me. Did she? Yeah. What's going on? The past couple of weeks I've been having like a lot of panic attacks and like they take, they take a lot out of me. Okay. Well, Arnie, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of worried about you. Okay. I mean, you, you just come to my office quite a bit and just talk about things and stuff like that. And I've kind of missed you this year. Um, I'm concerned with you not showing up for school. It's mostly just like a lot of mental issues. Okay. And if you're not showing up to school and you're not dealing with those issues, you're not going to be successful. And we want to make sure that you're successful and we're going to help you sad to watch it it has to progress to a certain level and for us how much trauma does that child have to go through before that level is is reached and then who's cleaning up that mess because we end up being the ones that you know have to deal with all that um, and have to try and make that child whole again after you know sometimes years of just extreme neglect It's like there's no in between. It's like either it's life threatening and now we're involved or it's not. <laughs> and there's no in between. Like there's no like, but this is emotionally damaging and this is not a healthy environment and this is, there's no structure. And you know, we got an email today, we have a third grader who can't stay awake on a regular basis. Is it life threatening? No, but do I want someone to go intervene and help the situation so the student can learn and function. Yeah, there's no in between. That, you can use that one example. Well, it's we just called the yeah, bureaucracy behind it. On a young man who his mom was not meeting any of his basic needs at all. Not a single one. He was hungry. He was not clean. Um, he did not have clothes that fit him or that were clean. Um, he did not have shoes that fit him. I mean, nothing. There's there this. This kid needed every service we, we offered. So we did laundry, we gave him clothes, we gave him food, um, pretty much met all of his basic needs. And then he started to get sick and mom wasn't taking him to the doctor. Um, started to have a lot of mental health concerns and mom wasn't taking him for that. And we made a referral to the region and got him connected with the region worker who was helping with some of those things um, for mental health. but. Um, I finally called the hotline um, because even the region worker and I are like, okay, wh what is mom doing? Like, it, where's this money going? How, how is there never any groceries in the house? How does this kid, you know? And um, yeah, basically the hotline worker told me, well, you're doing that, so what's the concern? Like, where's the concern? But you don't have custody of him. You don't have parental yeah. rights. How is that? So what is up with the mom? She was using meth with her new boyfriend. And I mean, ultimately the kid became a state ward, but it took Officer Johnson and I going to the county attorney to sit down and say, something really bad's gonna happen to this kid. And you know, it was, it was like spring and we were thinking about summer. I think in this day and age, the school is doing so much more than just 
teaching a child in a classroom. They don't have all the resources they need, but with the little they have, I think they do a lot and do a lot of good. Without the school, kid, a lot more kids would fall through the cracks. If we get time, I'm gonna call on you too, and I think I had a couple other people. Why should the school be doing this? And I, I agree with that. I think that yeah. all the time. I go home, like, mm -hmm. Jay and I have this I agree that, with that too, but nobody else is doing it. Yeah, but like, you can't just say, school, don't do it. And you abandon these kids and, and then you, yeah, I mean, if- Just write so, off 5% of the you, population. Yeah, and here in North Platte, sometimes we feel like it's more like 10%, Yeah, 15%. Like it, you know, it feels like that percentage kind of keeps getting a little bit bigger. It's okay to say, hey, it's not the school's responsibility, but then you better start holding people accountable whose responsibility it is, and that's not occurring right now. Like if we don't step up and start providing some services for these kids, and what does our community look like in 10, 20 years? I wanted attention and stuff, but I didn't really 